Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Charlotte to Go. Today's a, a day to be weather aware, we're saying, because um, if you stepped outside yesterday, mm -hmm. you saw, Ooh, I mean, take a look at some of this video. This is basically what it looked like um, around the Charlotte area. I mean, just a, a, a smoky haze all across uh, uh, Charlotte. And that impacted our high temperatures, actually, because yeah. we were anticipating at least the lower 90s. We only got to 89 degrees. That's only the third time so far July that we were stuck in the 80s or barely borderline because that smoke. Smoke can refract a lot of that sunlight and that solar energy. So we were a little bit cooler as a consequence as well. And then some people said that they could taste it. It was irritating their eyes. Yeah. And uh, that's the definition of air quality. It's not good. And it is starting to affect some people. Larry. And what's, uh, what happened yesterday is we started out in the morning and the air quality was okay. It was it was actually mm -hmm. code yellow uh, at that time. You could see uh, a lot, but today, weather where today, because of the extent of that, it will continue throughout the year. We'll show some pictures here. This is from over in Dallas. That's our tower cam. You can actually see the smoke. You can see the haze. That's exactly the way it was yesterday. It covered the entire area. This, normally in the background, you would be able to see every building wow. in Uptown Shaw. Once again, you can, you can see the extent of the smoke that's filtered in all the way from Canada right in to North Carolina because of that. Now, this is the for the area. This is a code orange that's in effect until 11 o'clock tonight uh, for sensitive groups and better tomorrow. But right now we're looking at a code red. This is the latest reading. Uh, that's, and it's been that way since about 4.30 this morning. And that includes the Charlotte area. Uh, code red, and that is something that would affect people who are who are, have asthma, emphysema, any t type of respiratory problem, anyone who has a heart problem. And this extends not only to Charlotte area, but all the way up to uh, Greensboro, High Point, Winston-Salem, and all the way down into the Greenville-Spartanburg area. That is a code red. That's why it is a weather aware day. But for North and South Carolina till, 11, till about midnight tonight, it is a code orange. A little bit confusing, but the latest readings, code red. A lot of people want to know what exactly does that mean? What does air quality mean, Chris? Okay, so it, this is all based on what's called the air quality index. So there's going to be different tiers and based on color. So and when one thing you don't hear about is a code green. So bringing this up, code green, that's good. Hey, no air pollution. Mm -hmm. Everything's wonderful. And oftentimes, usually here, because what usually triggers this is what's called ground ozone. And that is when you have usually the emissions from cars. So this happens most likely in city, mixing with the heat that creates ground ozone. That's the bad ozone. So that's not good to breathe in. So very few are affected by this. These pop up all the time. The code orange, as Larry was mentioned. This was the forecast. But notice the numbers. Everything goes from 0 to 500. When you're in that 101 to 150, and then this is all based on a set thing by the air quality in index about how much particulate matters in the air, how much it's going to affect us. We are right now at about a 155 to 160, so we're just above this. So code orange is unhealthy for sensitive groups. As Larry mentioned that, lung disease, asthma. But when you reach a code red, over 150, that affects everyone. Now, of course, it's going to affect those in code orange. And likely, if you have that, you know about this because your doctor tells you to look out for these air yeah. quality alerts. But that's what's been so rare. This is our third code red that we've had here in Charlotte in really the last month. Mm -hmm. And it was years since the last time we had one. And that came from when we had the wildfires here in North Carolina. Exactly, over, over in uh, Cleveland County, in that area. I, you know, so it's very rare to have... That situation in this area, like you said, it's the last time was many years ago, and this is all because of fires in Canada, and that's filtered all the way down into the Carolinas. And last time that we had this, when it was an extra big plume, this goes further, and we haven't had this yet. There's also a code purple, if we can bring that back up. This is very unhealthy. At this point, it's over 200. That means everyone may experience more serious health effects. Oh. That means anyone in code orange shouldn't be outside whatsoever. At this point, you shouldn't be running. Purple is what they have in Canada, yeah. right? Right now they had yeah. and there was even some parts right near the fire that you had this that's a maroon that's hazardous mm -hmm. and even when we had that big fire in uptown if you were right next to that big fire yeah. um this is likely what you're at because whenever you're right near the fire the entire population is likely affected and that means that it is absolutely don't be outside now we're nowhere close to that but whenever you start to see these darker colors like the reds the purples the maroons it's just best not to go on that run Cody, if you be, would go back yeah. and we'll show you once again we've been chris was explaining this we are code red and you can see the reading is somewhere about 155 somewhere mm -hmm. in that area so it's on the lower end but yes. it does mean uh, that that smoke is filtered in and a lot of people every 
remember I went, yeah, I did several different places. People said, I can see it, I can taste it, it's burning your eyes, yeah. you cough. So that, that's the situation. It's just amazing. Thousands of miles away, fires are burn, mm -hmm. burning that are affecting our air right here in the Charlotte area. So does this have the potential to get worse throughout the day? I think it's going to go the opposite. Yeah, that's, it's, okay. I don't, that's going to filter out. You know, the air, what's going to happen when we get some breezes, we'll kind of filter things out, spread uh -huh. it out. That's why they put in a coat orange until midnight tonight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and those usually expire about 8 p.m., so it should get a little bit better. But since we're right on the cusp, those in that unhealthy, sensitive groups, treat this as more of a code orange. But then for all of us, if you know that you don't breathe easy, yeah. maybe just take it easy. So this is not a hype saying don't go outside, you can't do anything outside since we're right on that cusp. But still, as Larry was mentioning, it's not a good breath of air. If it's affecting your taste and your eyes, uh, that means that there's a lot of extra in the air. Just limit your time outside. That's yeah. the best thing to do. We all have to be outside at some point, but you, you know, it, it's uncomfortable. So, mm -hmm. so the, for the folks watching this live at 739, which is a lot of folks, but it's more of an issue than the, for the folks who might be watching this later in the day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, the, yeah. and my, my other question is, is we often see, I know you guys know the answer to this, that's why I'm asking you, because I don't get it. But we've also often seen like wildfires in California and Oregon, Washington, out west, that never have this effect on us. So why is it that, what is it about the weather pattern that is creating this for us versus, say, a wildfire in California? That well, it, once again, it's the jet stream, the air currents that filter in. So we haven't had it the whole time. We, you know, yeah. Luckily, the air currents, the, the wind direction has taken it away. And then, you know, a big expanse of high pressure on top of yep. us, that helps out, too. That's it, sinking air. You know, yeah, and but, the weather's all connected. So yeah. how many times have you seen a heat advisory and excessive heat warning in Texas? That is called what they call the death ridge. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much have the jet stream. It's almost like an omega. It goes up like that. So that means where all the wildfires are in central Canada into the north, it dips down closer to us. So that's filtering in all that smoke at winds up to 150 to 250 miles per hour in the upper atmosphere. And then eventually that mixes down. So it doesn't take long for it to get here. Think about what a flight is from Charlotte to New York up to Canada. It's going to be of that time frame. So it's just pretty much a funnel of that smoke nonstop. But that's why we're looking at a better index because that's Jet stream's going to loosen. It's always, always yeah. moving, always in constant motion. That's why you know it, it'll filter in, filter out. But the thing is, we're going to be dealing with this for a long time because those yeah. fires are nowhere near out. So this is going to be—I think this is going to be a situation that could last all the way to fall. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean, intermittently doesn't mean every day. Sure, not yeah. every day, yeah. but still, yeah. something to be aware yeah. of. So well, for everyday H's. things, I mean, do we do we wear masks outside? I mean, what's the if it's going to be around this long? What can we well, do? You know, the fire. Way? Remember when the fire in South Park? Mm -hmm. uh, it was so mm -hmm. intense that the air was so bad over there. We were telling people to do that. I mean, there, there. I think people with respiratory problems, things like that. Uh, we have the mask, so why not? Mm -hmm. That would be that would certainly be helpful for many people. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say most people, whenever we're talking about the smoke and even borderline, so unhealthy for sensitive groups, if, if you know who you are and you're part of that, uh, yeah. you, you have the mask, maybe that's a good idea, especially those N95s. But as Larry mentioned, it, there's going to be trends in the forecast. So you can always go online through the government, look at your air quality index, AQI, you can type that into Google, it's going to tell you an update. And then we're, of course, going to let you know every time that it's even close to that code orange and certainly code red. All right, yeah. All right folks, uh, gentlemen, mm. thank you both for your expertise. Gotcha. It's <laughs> very helpful to have around on, day, on days experts. like this. Right uh, in your questions. That's right. <laughs> uh, then we'll see you back here tomorrow morning, folks.